Hi, this is uh, Sridhar Ramaswamy from NVIDIA. What I have here is our uh, Kalal development platform. This has a next generation Tegra processor that we fondly call Kalal. It has a quad core CPU and a 12 core uh, GPU. And what I'm going to show here is a technology demo, a game called Global, which we specifically you know, developed for uh, the Kalal platform. Um, the interesting thing about this game is uh, it shows off you know, the dynamic lighting and uh, all the advanced graphics uh, capabilities of uh, Kalal. Uh, this demo is called Global, and as you can see, it's basically a, blob, a ball that is the light source and it's moving around and the light that is emitting from the glow ball can also change its, uh, you know, depending on the texture on the ball, the light, the light uh, that it sh uh, shines on all the surrounding objects can also change. So I'm cycling through the various lighting effects here and you can see it looks spectacular. And it also implements, uh, you know, real-time physics calculations. Like when I move the ball around on the table, uh, of course, I ran off the table. So when I move the ball around by moving the accelerometer, you can see all the curtains and all moving, and it's this is all real-time physics calculations. Uh, obviously, I'll have to demo it with it being mm -hmm. uh, on the ground. Uh, so there you go. So and all the barrel effects, right? You know, it's all being done in real time. Um, the trick to this game is, uh, let me try it. So, uh, okay. So once I start playing it, oops. It's a really challenging game, but it's got lots of interesting graphics features, as you can see, and uh, and shows off all the graphics capability of Kalal. And let me just bring up this menu just to show you what, how much of the CPU is being used. And as you can see, it's using all four CPU cores for the physics calculations and uh, you know all the you know interactions and the collision detection. Now, if I turn off two CPU cores, like I'm just using two CPU cores, and you'll see how slow the game runs right the mm -hmm. frame rates are like much below 20 frames per second and you can see like a tiny frame rate counter up here mm -hmm. and it's showing 13 frames per second now if i turn on all four cores you now you'll immediately see that you know the frame rate goes up much higher mm. i need to figure out how. yeah there you go once i get back onto the table it goes to 50 frames per second so that's global uh, it's a very interesting demo and uh, you know i'm really excited about uh, this uh, platform and uh, we expect to see tablets based on Kalal to come to the market in September. Uh, we are working with a bunch of OEM partners but I can't really name them until they are ready to talk about uh -huh. it publicly. But uh, as you can see this is Lost Planet 2, it's using the exact same assets and uh, you know, looks great on a tablet device. Yeah. What is it with power uh, consumption? So the power consumption will be, you know, the same or as lower than Tegra for the same workload. Let's say, you know, you're running uh, uh, web browsing on Tegra too, uh, and the same thing you do on Kalal, it'll actually be lower power because we are splitting the workload across four cores, running each core at a lower frequency compared to a dual core processor, and also lower voltage. And because power is proportional to the square of the voltage, you get much big uh, power savings. Uh -huh. on quad core. So we expect power consumption to be the same or lower than Tegra for comparable workloads. Obviously you have four CPU cores which means you can do more and when there are workloads that require a lot of processing power obviously then you uh -huh. get the performance for the power that uh -huh. you consume. Um, so that's Lost Planet 2. Um, Windmill is another interesting demo. Um, so what we are showing here is real-time dynamic texturing. Uh, what it allows uh, developers to do is like, you know, with very simple commands, dynamically change the textures in the game and it's, uh, you know, uh, and they use all four uh, quad, uh, you know, core CPU cores to do all the dynamic texture calculation. So it's much easier for them to like, you know, develop games. Mm -hmm. Like today, if you see like all these complex mobile games, they require 800 to 900 meg to be loaded on the phone, but with dynamic texturing, they can just reduce the asset size and the games can be compressed to be less than 100 meg or 200 meg. So it's really great and, uh, you know, Mm. As you can see, the textures will change dynamically. You'll go from summer to winter to spring, and then all of this is being done in the CPU. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, windmill.